this is um, another day. This is 10 hours, and I'm just having seven students connected. It's not. Uh... So we make sure the others join before we get the lectures, please. Okay. So far, so good. Um, we're having people join, yeah. That's, that's, hope it's been exciting. Hope you've been having great time. Okay. Hope you've been having a great time. And, uh, while we are waiting on others to join, uh, so what are the experiences we've had during this COVID-19 lockdown? Please, what, any, what kind of experience with COVID-19 lockdown? What have you learned? What has been your, your, your most exciting moments? And your, your experiences? Okay, so that is how I want to this class. What has been your experiences during the lockdown? So you can you can just type them on the comment section. Okay, so we, we start by sharing experiences during this lockdown. Okay. This scenario situation comes with something for us to learn. Okay. Uh, Chipego. So what has been your experience? I can see you there. So what has been your experience during this lockdown? I would like to hear from, from you. Um, other students, just you can type in your experiences during this COVID-19 lockdown. We get to see that life is bigger than what we want us to what we study at times, right? Life is quite quite bigger than that. For the experiences during this lockdown period, what has been your experiences? You can share them with us. So I'm waiting for the experiences before we continue. So our class will advance on the basis of that, okay? So we can start with uh, you sharing your experiences during this lockdown. If there are no experience, okay. So I'm still waiting on the experiences you've been having during this lockdown period. Um, Lazarus says, understanding certain materials of study hasn't been that easy. Okay. Sibanda says, life has become hard to find money for school fees, which, okay. Ah, okay, I understand. I was about asking. Which school fees are you talking of? Forgetting that you still consider being in school. Okay. 
Okay, please are we are still. Okay, so what has been the experiences? Uh, share your experiences that we've had. I can see Rafi. Good morning. So the experience is the load shedding in some areas. Studying has been a challenge. Okay. Ruben says uh, it's been quite a challenge. Studying, load shedding has been taking a toll on him and others. Okay. So we are still listening, we are still waiting on experiences during this comes with a baggage of information. Wallia says, well, it's been quite an experience staying in DAS almost every day. It's, and it's new and kind of hard to adjust to. Okay, the studying from home is challenging. Okay. Life is a teacher, but then not the best teacher anyway. Life is a teacher and but not the best teacher. But in every situation, one of the things I've come to learn is that there's always something to learn from it. It says, yes, studying has been challenging. So please, if you say a word or two on how to seriously study at home, okay? Joseph says something like that. And then Sibanda says, studying and working is a big challenge than home duties, okay? Okay. It was yesterday. Now, was it yesterday or some days back? I to a student actually. And I, I, I was saying that I was talking to a student some days back, and I was saying that um, what is your motivation for study? A Frenchman says, What is your raison d'etre? What is the reason behind your study? If you there is a passion that that fuels your study. There's a passion that fuels your study. So first of all, at the bottom, at the backdrop of study is a passion. Okay? It's a passion. If you are caught up just with a title that I, I end up being a doctor or whatever, and you're not passionate about the information or the knowledge you you need to qualify for that uh, title, study will become difficult, okay? It will become quite difficult. And so, um, first, desire to know, the desire to be, to be knowledgeable is one of the things that pulls you to study. Now, a student met me the other day, of course, he's been coming to the office now and then, and he said, Sir, where do you get this zeal, this zeal to keep, to keep being busy? I said, I'm just knowing and influencing people. That's my passion, knowing and influencing. And for you to influence people, you must have the way with that. You must have the, the savoir faire. Uh, the Frenchman says, this, uh, you must be passionate about knowing. Don't be carried about title, and that's one of the same things I've seen with students. They just want to be doctors without having nothing in between. Okay, knowledge is important. Don't be a. Don't think that you will learn when you go to the clinic on, on, on pro procedures and protocols handed down to you. Okay, so Joseph, build a passion. Build a passion, okay? Build a passion to study. I want to know biochemistry. I want to know physiology. I want to know anatomy. I want to know the thing. An ocean around it that has an aroma. How do you feel when you are beside people who know something? I know the first thing you get intimidated, but they were not born with those things, okay? They were not born with those things. So knowledge has an aroma. Okay, so Sitwale says it has been not it has not been easy. I'm also finding time to do school. Time is limited. That's 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 yes, good morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'll talk to you when I finish my class, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, Situale, I was about responding to your comment before you deleted it. The work, then you're finding time to study. Then you shouldn't be studying, you should be working. Okay, okay. But in any case, that is from experiences from uh, during this COVID, okay? General experiences, it's really hard to study at home, no motivation plus all disturbances. Yeah, it could be, it, it, it requires an impetus. Okay, it requires an impetus from within, it requires an energy, a drive from within. Okay, it requires a drive from within. Okay, it requires a drive from within. Since he's learned during this period, he's been exercising, he's been going on, on jogging. And, 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 I that, and that has taught him consistency. And one of the things I learned about athletics is that you understand know, is the fact that athletes are consistent and they are persistent and they are disciplined and they have an inner drive to motivate them to do something. An inner drive. Okay. One or two more experiences, and then we can switch on to to what we're supposed to do today. Okay, but please, uh, whatever be the situation and the scenario, wherever you are, don't give up. That's what you remember. Oh, it's difficult for me to study at home. This challenge or this challenge, yeah. Difficulties abound, but please. Because one of the things when the exams will come, I'm not sure one of the questions will not be, what are your challenges during this period? And, you won't, you won't have a place to write to explain that you didn't have power or you are working or you had house chores. I'm not sure there will be such an opportunity. So please, okay, life doesn't give us the opportunity to explain difficulties. You understand? Excuse me, please. It doesn't give us that opportunity. So as much as you can, giving your best, okay? Giving your best, and um, I feel so strongly that if you got up this morning, or probably maybe if this lockdown has to go for quite an untold distance of time, and uh, things turn out sad, what do you think your life would be without you completing medical school? Okay. What do you think your life would be without completing medical school if things had to go? So you cannot, so you cannot peg your life on just medical education. It's a painful truth. University, Cambridge, and all that. Or one of the universities, they said, they will um, they will switch online for the next academy year 2021 2020 2021 that means everything will be online okay so please as much as you can brace yourself for the worst and brace yourself for the best okay device tag train yourself on an institution, neither will you blame it on a nation, okay? You can afford to, to do that, okay? Um, so far, so good. I don't think uh, there, there are no signs. Whatever be the opening of schools, it rests not on the university, it rests on the government, okay? So today we'll be talking about the stomach. Don't give up. Okay, I don't know. I keep coming back to this thing. Don't give up. Yes, and don't give up. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Don't give up, please. Say, so behold, one manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the sons of God. Behold, one manner of love the Father has given unto us. This during this period that you appreciate social connections. Okay. And if you can appreciate social connections within this period, what much more 
how much more will you appreciate spiritual connections? Okay, if you can appreciate social connections during this period. So please, there are many people going through terrible things right now. I hear a lot of them, and some students call me to inform me, but I can tell you, don't give up, please. Don't, don't give up. And then don't become a beast. Don't because any kind of person, please. Okay. Be reassured of God's love. Say, so behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the sons of God. So when he came to his own, his own did not receive him. But they that received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God, the sons and daughters of God. That's it. We may be going, you may be going through something very challenging, but please, that's why he says, cast your cares on me for you. I care for you. God cares about you. He cares about you more than you care about yourself. He cares about your academics more than you care about. He cares ab about your future. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you. I knew you. I knew you. He knew you before he formed you. So please, don't become any kind of person during this period. Don't person doing this. Perfect yourself. Just become better. Okay. During this period, again, you can find time since you're home. You can learn some things online. Do some business investments. Life. Don't take your life on medical education alone. I can tell you that. Don't. Life is living. There is no other time you live. February has passed. March has passed. April, May is passing. You will never have these times again. And so even when things turn to normal, when things turn to normal, you will never, you will not rewind the job. If something happens and, and the Lord takes you and you die today, or there is appointed to man to die and after that comes judgment. If you die today, will you stand before the maker confidently? And that question is, is your name and the Lamb's Book of Life. If it's your name, people are dying of COVID. It's 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 it's, it's God's grace that we have been preserved and exempted. But if you go today, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Is your name written? I'm not saying if you attend a church or you go to a synagogue or I don't I don't I'm not talking if you have a Christian name or not. But is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Please. This may not be for everybody listening to me, but that's just one, two, or three persons whose beginning is from what I've just said. This should be the time to have an introspection about your life. Why am I, what am I living for? Am I accountable to a superior being? Am I accountable to, to God? What am I living for? Okay, what am I living for? Where will this attitude lead me to? Excuse me, please. Where will this lifestyle lead me to? What are the fruits? What are the benefits of it? Momentary sensuality. Say so to be carnally minded is death, is to be separated from God, but to be spiritually minded is life. You can't afford to be anyhow. You can't afford to live your life anyhow. Please, you are counting a pranks with it. Don't play games with your life. You may not have a second chance. And the, the, the one time mistake you may make can be so please invest time with, with God. Perfect your relationship with him. He's been calling you all this while. Just like the prodigal son or the prodigal daughter, you left, you went and squandered your life, you righteous living. And, and please, don't stay there. He's calling for you. He's calling for you. Come back. Come back home. Come back to the Father's love. Come back to the Father's love. Come back to the Father's love. Don't rationalize it. Don't rationalize it. You are created in holiness. You are created in righteousness and true holiness. 
Okay. Thank you once again for your time. I'm grateful for giving me this time to be able to motivate you. And please, uh, uh, Clyde, you don't have to struggle with anxiety one day at a time. Okay. One day at a fellowshipping with people and fellowshipping with God. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Don't take your life in one in one place. Because if if you die today and go to heaven, one of your sins will not be that you didn't you didn't complete medical school. <laughs> you understand? One of your sins will not be that you com you, you didn't complete medical school. But will be will, did you do what I asked you to do while you were on earth? That's very fundamental. So don't pack your life in one position. Live life to the fullest according to God's standard. Mm, so we look at this, we we'll look at gastric secretion today. Okay, but before we look at gastric secretion, we're looking at the stomach. So we look at the physiologic anatomy, the functional anatomy of the stomach. Okay. And so please make sure you have your pens and papers and you're jotting down things. Don't, yeah. And somebody, some people ask me, will I give notes afterward? So after taking time to teach you this, you expect notes again. Amen and brethren. Huh? Okay, so this is what we so abdomen and anatomy. I doubt, I doubt very much. But then, if, if you have done the abdomen, of course, the stomach is uh, is an abdominal organ, and then um, it has three main parts. Okay, it's unfortunate that I don't have a board. Okay, so we, it has three main parts. It has a fundus, just as from the ends of the esophagus. We have the fundus, we have the body, and then we we have the antrum. Okay, so we have the fundus, the body, and the antrum. We have the fundus, we have the body, we have the antrum, which continues as what the, uh, the pylorus, okay, via the pyloric canal, okay? And this pylorus is surrounded by this pyloric sphincter, okay? We talked about sphincters that uh, regulate the opening and closure of apertures for food to leave one, uh, one cavity to the other or one segment of the if you look at the the stomach, the stomach has a lesser curvature and a greater curvature. Okay, so you look at your stomach this way; it has a lesser curvature and a greater curvature. So on the lesser curvature, which is uh, which is related towards the liver, so we have a lesser curvature. So we have a a constriction between the body and the antrum. Okay, at this lesser curvature, we call it the uh, the incisura angularis. Okay, the incisura angularis. Mm -hmm. Call what in Cisura. In Cisura. Okay. In Cisura. Angul Angularis. Okay. So that is it, it's um it's a it's, it's a constriction okay in the, in the lesser chemical between where you have the antrum between the antrum and what and the pylorus okay so we have what, what we have um, we have the um, incisura angularis okay and we had mentioned earlier on that the opening of the tubes into the stomach is called the cardia okay the op opening of this uh, uh, esophagus into the stomach is called the cardia Controlled by the lower esophageal sphincter. Okay. Okay. So I gave an assignment the other day, and I've had people requesting for me what what did I mean? I I, I did I I made a mistake, but I thought I was quite pretty clear that you should write on the pathophysiology of the gastroesophageal reflux disease. Okay. To write the pathophysiology of the gastroesophageal reflux disease. And I said, well, when is it, uh, the, the, the deadline, please? Anything that is that enters after the deadline is minus three marks, okay? In the minimum. Uh, okay, that was just, okay, that was a five mark question, I think. But then I'll be able to, at least minus one or two marks, okay? So we've looked at the functional anatomy of the stomach, the length of the, the, the fundus, the, the body, and the antrum, which continues as what? As the pyloric canal into the word into the pylorus okay and um, we've talked about the pyloric sphincter that guards the pylorus and we've also mentioned about the uh, the incisura angularis where it's a, a constriction 
in the, at the lesser curvature, okay, between the angle and the antrum and the pylorus, okay. And then we've talked about the opening of the esophagus into the stomach. That area is called the cardia, and this is controlled by what? The cardiac sphincter or the lower esophageal sphincter. So let's look at the gastric mucosa. Okay, remember, can you see also the muscle? You have the four layers the submucosa, the muscularis mucosa, the sorry, the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis uh, uh, mucosa, and then we have the serosa. Okay. So we had four layers. Can we remember? The, the mucosa, the submucosa, the, muscu the, the, the muscular coat or the muscularis propria, or the proper, okay, and then what the serosa, okay. So, so once we look at the gastric mucosa, okay, we want to talk about the gastric mucosa, okay, and we mentioned this gastric mucosa contains what simple tubular glands, okay, these are simple tubular glands which um, open at the uh, mucosa surface, okay, at the gastric pits. Okay. And then we also, the, the gastric mucosa is uh, thrown into folds. Remember, we mentioned that we had uh, the gastric mucosa could be modified, right? So it's thrown into folds. And this, this, this is thrown into large folds called what? Rugi. Okay. R large folds called what? Rugi. Okay. Rugi. So the mucosa is thrown into large folds called what? Rugi. And this this folds is by the contracting the the, the the actions of, of what of, of what of the, of the mucosa, okay, of the mucosa. So we also mentioned that um, the the glands in the cardiac region and the pyloric canal. Remember the card where the esophagus is opening and the pyloric canal on this side. The glands there contain mainly the mucous cells, okay, and which produce what. Uh, mucus, while those of the um, fundus and the body contains different other kinds of cells. The first type of cells present there is what called the ozintic cells. We have the ozintic cells. The ozintic cells they secrete hydrochloric acid, and uh, intrinsic factor. Okay, so it is either the ozintic cells or what the parietal cells. It's either called the ozintic cells or the parietal cells. Okay, they secrete what hydrochloric acid and um, and um, intrinsic factor. Then the next type of cells will have the chief cells. Chief cells or the cells. Or also call them some books, call them Zai Mugin cells. Okay. We have the chief cells, the peptic cells, or the Zai Mugin cells. They secrete proteolytic enzymes, pepsinogens, okay, and other enzymes. Okay. Then we also have the mucous cells, which secrete what? Mucus. Okay. Now, at the antral region, they will have the antral glands, okay, in the pyloric antrum. They have some cells called the G cells. Okay, the G cells. These G cells secrete what gastrin hormone. Okay, the G cells secrete what gastrin hormone. Okay, so we are talking about the cells of we are talking about the gastric mucosa. Mm -hmm. Talking about the gastric mucosa, and say so they contain what simple tubular glands, in which the, the mucosa is thrown into folds called rugae by the effect of the the, the contraction of the muscularis mucosae. And then they, we said the glands in the cardia and the pyloric, the cardiac region and the pyloric canal uh, are mostly made of mucous cells, which produce mucus. Okay. Why the body and the the fundus and the body is made up of other cells, okay, together with the mucous cells, made of the parietal cells or the ozintic cells, which secrete what hydrochloric acid, okay, and an intrinsic factor. Then we also have the peptic cells, the chief cells of the uh, zymogen cells, which secrete what? Uh, proteases, okay? 
pepsinogens, another enzyme. They also have the G cells in the pyloric antrum, which secrete what the, uh, the gastrin hormone. Okay, the gastrin hormone. Now we have, um, haven't said that. Let's we looked at the functional anatomy of the, the stomach. We looked at the mucosa. Let's look at the innervation, the nerve supply of the stomach. Okay. In our first class and discussion, we talked about, uh, and I discussed in detail about autonomic uh, supply to the gastrointestinal gland. Uh, uh, sympathetic stimulation leads to relaxation of the stomach wall, especially the proximal part, and contraction of the pyloric sphincter. Okay, so we have relaxation and then contraction of the pyloric sphincter. That means food cannot leave the stomach to the duodenum, isn't it? So what does it what do, what does it mean? It, it, sympathetic stimulation delays gastric emptying. Okay, the 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 rate of movement of food from one compartment to the other, from one section of the GIT to the other. So sympathetic stimulation will reduce, will delay gastric emptying. That's the emptying of the stomach into the small intestine. Why? Because it what it leads to relaxation of the stomach, especially the proximal part, and then contraction of what of the sphincter. Okay. So it also stimulates little stimulation of micro secretion from the pyloric mucosa, and then sympathetic stimulation also leads to what. Um, Vasoconstriction constriction of gastric blood vessels. Okay, you begin to imagine. So when somebody is nervous for quite a long time, it's under stress, the sympathetic nervous system is pro is stimulated. You begin to imagine there's vasoconstriction constriction of the gas of the blood vessels. Okay, of the gastric blood vessels. What happen? We may have issues of necrosis or ischemia, necrosis, and pontics of what of lesions that could lead to what ulceration, isn't it? Ulceration. Look at parasympathetic supply, parasympathetic supply, okay? Okay, this is derived from the, from the vega nerves, okay? And stimulation will lead to contraction of the stomach wall, especially the distal part. Take note, stimulation leads to contraction of the stomach wall, especially what the distal part, and also relaxation of what? Of the, uh, of the pyloric sphincter, okay? And also relaxation of what? Of the pyloric sphincter, okay? The relaxation of the filter. Then, secondly, also leads to a secretion of rich hydrochloric acid and pepsinogens. Okay, we'll come to that. And then, leads to vasodilation of what? Of the uh, gastric blood vessels. Okay, it leads to vasodilation of the gastric blood vessels. Okay, so uh, we look at uh, mechanism of gastric secretion. Okay, mechanism of gastric secretion. We look at mechanism of gastric secretion. Okay. The, the secretion of gastric juice passes in three phases. Okay. The secretion of gastric juice passes in three phases. Remember when we were talking about uh, salivary secretion? We said salivary secretion passes in three phases, right? The cephalic phase, which has to do, we call it the psychic phase, okay, or the nervous phase. And then we have the we talked about the buccal phase and we talked about what the gastric phase, right? Those are the three phases for salivary secretion. So we have three phases for gastric acid secretion. We have the cephalic phase, we have the gastric phase, and the intestinal phase. Okay, so please, so we have three phases of gastric acid secretion or the gastric secretion. So we have the cephalic phase, which is nervous, which is psychic which is up here. Then we have the gastric phase, okay? And then we have the, we have the, the intestinal phase, okay? So the cephalic phase, this is the phase that occurs before food reaches the stomach, okay? So it aims at preparing, to de preparing the stomach to deal with food before it comes. Okay, sorry, please. So, uh, this phase occurs before food and reaches the stomach. The cephalic phase occurs before what? Before food reaches the stomach. Okay, so what is it? what is the essence of this cephalic phase? That means before food even reaches your stomach, gastric secretion is already occurring. 
Okay, you can even bear witness of that. Okay. So but then it so it's occurring preparing to receive this this meal. Okay. And it occurs through both conditioned and unconditioned reflexes. Okay. So the cephalic phase is under the control of both conditioned and unconditioned reflexes. When we were talking about salivary secretion, we said the conditioned reflexes are acquired. They are not inborn. They are not inherent. Okay. They are not inborn. Okay. They are acquired. So they require training. They require learning. Okay. They require training and they require what learning. Okay. And of course, that would require that what the they, they need an intact cerebral cortex, okay? So during the condition reflexes, so which can also seeing food, smelling is similar to that of what? The, the mechanism, the mechanism is similar to that of uh, the salivary secretion, okay? Okay, then we have the unconditioned reflex. Okay, this is inherent, this is inborn. Okay, you don't need to train, you don't need to learn. That means putting food in your mouth, You're just introducing food in your buccal cavity leads to gastric uh, acid secretion. How? It stimulates the test bonds. So from here, imports are taken to the medulla, okay, where the vagus nerve now relays the efferent output to the stomach to bring about gastric secretion okay so we are talking about what we are talking about gastric secretion and we're saying that gastric secretion goes through three phases we have the cephalic phase we have the uh, gastric phase and we have what the intestinal phase the cephalic phase is um, psychic is nervous okay and then this happens even before food reaches your stomach okay so the stomach is preparing to receive food okay and so it or it it's it's by conditioned and unconditioned reflexes and we say for the conditioned reflexes they are reflexes these are learned they are not inborn okay they are trained you do undergo training okay and so it requires an intact cerebral cortex, okay? So smelling food, hearing about food, thinking about food will lead to what gastric acid secretion just by the, the same way by the mechanism in which it leads to what salivary, uh, salivary secretion, <laughs> okay? Then uh, we have the unconditioned reflexes. They are not inborn, okay? They are not inborn. The unconditioned reflexes, sorry, they are inborn, okay? They are inborn. Okay, so you don't require any training or learning. And so putting by introduction of food in the buccal cavity, okay, will lead to stimulation of gastric acid secretion by a vagovega reflex. Okay, by a vagovega reflex. Okay. So since both the conditioned and the unconditioned reflexes produce effect through vega nerves, that means we can abolish it by bilateral vagotomy, okay? So you can abolish it by vagotomy or by using atropine, okay? By using what? Atropine. Now, one of the things which I want you to note is that we, we learned about the enteric nervous system and we said the, the autonomic nerves act actually by also relaying with the enteric nervous system, okay? And we said also one thing is that the vega pre, pre nerve terminates on the local nerve plexus, okay? The axons which now stimulate the ozintic and peptic cells by releasing uh, acetylcholine, okay? The ozintic and the peptic cells by releasing what? Acetylcholine, okay? Then they also stimulate the G cells by releasing gas, uh, uh, Gastrin releasing peptide, okay. Gastrin releasing peptide. Gastrin releasing peptide, okay. And then this gastrin releasing peptide helps the G cells to produce what gastrin, which goes into the blood 
and then comes back and stimulates the osentic and the peptic cells to produce both hydrochloric acid and what? And pepsinogens, okay? The, the volume of, um, of juice secreted in the cephalic phase is little, just about 20%. So the cephalic phase contributes just about 20% of the gastric uh, secretion, okay? So, and it's basically determined by the state of the appetite. So when, when you have more appetite, okay, then you can be able to secrete this quantity so much. But if you lack appetite, there's also a tendency that it will not contribute so much in the quantity of gastric secretion, okay? Yeah. Then the next phase is the gastric phase, okay? The next phase is what? The gastric phase. It's the gastric phase. And this phase occurs when food enters the stomach, okay? And this is the main, this is the main mechanism of gastric secretion. The gastric phase is the main mechanism of what? Gastric secretion, okay? Because it continues for about three hours and accounts for 70% of the gastric secretion, okay? It accounts for 70% of the gastric secretion. And so it, it, it occurs, this gastric phase occurs by two mechanisms, the nervous mechanism and what the endocrine, okay? The nervous mechanism and the endocrine or the hormonal mechanism, okay? The nervous mechanism and the hormonal or the endocrine mechanism. So the nervous mechanism involves first a local enteric reflex, okay? What involves a local enteric reflex, a local enteric reflex, okay? A local enteric reflex. Now, can we still remember what we talked about local enteric reflex in which these are short reflexes, axonal reflexes in which the, the afferent, the integrating center and the efferent are all located within what? Within the GIT wall. Right, so we expect that when they said this, when food enters the stomach, there will be a distension of the stomach wall, a mechanical distension of the stomach wall, especially the fundus, okay, and the body. So this will stretch and initiate what local reflexes, okay, local reflexes involving more, mainly what the submucosa nerve plexus, okay. Remember, we're talking about secretion. If we, if it was about motility, we'll be talking about what the myenteric plexus, okay. So we're talking about what. Secretion. So this involves mainly what the submucosa plexus that is in between the submucosa, the, the submucosa, and what uh, the uh, inner uh, circular smooth muscle. Okay, inner circular smooth muscle. Okay. So, so that's where it's located. So when there's a stretching of the GIT wall, okay, this will lead to what uh, initial activation of the the local reflexes this will initiate local reflexes okay then we also have instances where chemical stimulation of the gastric mucosa chemical stimulation of the gastric mucosa by the products of gastric digestion particularly polypeptides it will stimulate what um, it will stimulate gastric acid secretion by the same way excuse please by the same local enteric reflex, okay, by the same local axonic reflex. It's very important. Please go back to what we discussed when we were talking about control of the gastrointestinal functions and we talked about the, re the reflexes, okay? And then go again, we look at it when we talked about the, the layers of the GIT wall, okay? That is fundamental. I remember, remember I told you that those first lectures were crucial. Okay, so we talked about the nervous reflexes. We said the first thing was what? The first thing was um, the local anterior reflex. Then the second one is the vago vega reflex, okay? And where mechanical distension and chemical stimulation of the gastric mucosa initiate impulses that are transported in the vega nerve and to the, to the vega nucleus in the medulla oblongata, and then the efferent are sent back via the vega nerve to the GIT, to the stomach. Okay, that's why we call them the vago vega nerve, where the afferent and the efferent are within what? The vega nerve, okay? And so this, this impulse are discharged via the vega nerve fibers to the stomach, leading to what? Gastric secretion, okay? Leading to what? Gastric secretion, okay? 
and this gastric secretion then can be stimulated directly also by certain chemicals and substances. For example, caffeine and ethanol, okay? Caffeine and ethanol will directly stimulate gastric acid secretion, okay? And uh, you begin to imagine now when you, for those, for those who drink, take alcohol and caffeine, you see sometimes you get a little bit hungry uh, quicker, okay? Then the, we said the gastric phase is by two mechanisms, the nervous and what? The nervous and, um, the nervous and uh, the, the hormonal, okay? By the hormonal, the hormonal mechanism is the main mechanism of gastric secretion. The hormonal mechanism is the main mechanism for gastric secretion. And uh, we will have mechanical distension of the pyloric antrum. Okay, remember, remember the pyloric antrum. When it's a mechanical distension of the pyloric antrum, as well as uh, chemical stimulation of, of its own of the mucosa of the pyloric antrum, hormone release, okay, from the G cells, okay, it results in what gastrin hormone release from the G cells, okay. So the release of this gastrin hormone, remember we mentioned that what these nerves here can release gastrin releasing uh, peptides. Okay, that acts on the G cells to produce what? To produce uh, gastrin. So gastrin, since it's a hormone, enters into blood, and when it enters into the blood, it the blood brings it to, into the peptic cells to it stimulates the uh, the peptic cells as well as the uh, parietal cells to produce hydrochloric acid. Okay. So the third uh, phase is the intestinal phase, okay? The third phase is the intestinal phase, okay? This phase occurs uh, when, uh, when time, okay? Time is the product of gastric digestion. What is the product of uh, digestion in the mouth? What is the product? What's the name of the product of digestion in the mouth? Okay, that one in the in the in the in the, in the stomach in the gas in the stomach is called chyme. Okay, so let me get the answer from the class. So the, this phase, chyme enters the duodenum. Okay, when chyme enters the duodenum. Okay, now when chyme enters the duodenum, it stimulates secretion of additional gastric. That's beautiful. Uh, Kennedy says bolus champion nearly okay is a, a bolus okay so the the intestinal phase oh, that's beautiful means we are following okay the in, the phase of course we say the intestinal phase of course with chime which is the product of gastric digestion enters the duodenum okay and then chime stimulates secretion of an additional gastrin okay we call it intestinal gastrin and it's believed to be formed from certain cells in the duodenum called the TG cells, okay? The TG cells. Okay? Or intestinal gastrin. Intestinal gastrin. Intestinal gastrin, okay? And it's produced from some cells, gastrin releasing cells in the duodenum called the TG cells, okay? Called the what? The TG cells, okay? And this uh so when we have when certain chemicals irritate the mucosa or when this chime irritates the duodenal mucosa it, there is a local enteric reflex that is set up okay the local enteric reflex which leads to what gastrin release okay and the gastrin release is stimulated mainly by chemical stimuli okay okay so the absorbed amino acids from the duodenum may also stimulate what gastric secretion what we call humoral mechanism please listen this is quite different humoral humoral means just it's it, it's just within gastric acid secretion so it doesn't have to pass through a hormone so it's humoral okay the 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 the, the fluid the containing the amino acids okay gastric secretion okay gastric secretion okay but then the intestinal phase uh the intestinal phase uh contributes just a little quarter of the gastric acid secretion okay so we have several factors that inhibit gastric secretion and motility okay and these are usually stronger than the excitatory factors okay 
they are usually stronger than the excitatory factor. So we have the, in, the factors, the intestinal factors that inhibit gastric secretion are more than the factors that stimulate. But the factors that stimulate are when you have products of digestion enter the intestines, okay? And then we it will cause the release of certain chemical, or certain substances or certain hormones, or it will cause the local enteric reflex that would uh, bring about gastric acid secretion. But we have inhibitory factors, okay, that are more stronger than the excitatory factors. Please get this point clear. The inhibiting factors, intestinal factors, the, the intestinal inhibiting intestinal factors, okay, that inhibit gastric secretion are much more stronger than the excitatory factors that stimulate gastric acid secretion. Okay, so we have intestinal factors that inhibit gastric acid secretion. Okay, for humoral, humoral uh, mechanism, so to speak, is that the absorbed amino acids from the duodenum, the absorbed ones that have been absorbed, okay, can also be hormonal, okay? So that's a humo, the humora, of course, just within the, the, the amino acids within the, uh, the fluid that is, yeah, within the fluids, okay? So uh, what I was saying is that the intestinal factors inhibit gastric acid secretion, that the intestinal, intestinal factors that inhibit gastric acid secretion are much more stronger than the uh, excitatory factors, okay? The intestinal factors that inhibit gastric acid secretion are much more stronger than the excitatory factors, okay? They are much more stronger than the excitatory factors, okay? And so what are those factors that inhibit gastric, what are those intestinal factors that inhibit gastric acid secretion? That means when food leaves the when food leaves the stomach into the duodenum, what are the factors of that within the duodenum that call that inhibits gastric acid that inhibits gastric secretion or that stimulate gastric secretion? But now we are looking at the factors that within the intestines that inhibit gastric secretion. We don't we don't expect gastric secretion to go on checked, okay, to go unchecked. That means when food leaves the stomach to the intestine, there are some things within the intestine, the activity of the food within the intestine provokes the, in the stomach to stop producing gastric secretions. Okay, one of the first, one of the intestinal factors that inhibit gastric secretion is the distension of the duodenum. Okay, distension of the duodenum. Distension of the duodenum. And we would, uh, We'll see that, okay? And that's part of what we call the, uh, the enterogastric re reflex, and we'll look at that, okay? We've looked at that before, and I would, I would have you look at it again. If you look at it again, and it's quite important. It's quite important. Try to look whether I wrote, I wrote it as an ass assignment for you somewhere. We'll get that as an answer. So we have the distension of the duodenum. Okay, and we'll look at it briefly. Then we have excess acid and fat. Okay, excess acid and fat in, 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 the, in, the, in the duodenum would inhibit gastric secretion. Things and look at when you are joining the class one hour later. Okay. The same thing with lucidity and loveness. You are joining the class one hour later. Okay. So we have distension of the duodenum. Okay. So distension of the duodenum would inhibit gastric acid secretion. And we'll look at it shortly. They also have excess acid and, and, and fat. Okay. We also have irritant substances and hypertonic fluids. Okay. Within the duodenum. Can you stop that? Okay. And this, these factors we have mentioned, they operate by two major mechanisms, okay? So when these when this, uh, irritant substances or when these products of digestion, excess acids and fat, when they enter the small intestine, they, 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 they cause, they stimulate the duodenal mucosa to release 
certain kinds of hormones that inhibit gastric activity. So the entry of um, products of digestion into the duodenum will stimulate the duodenal mucosa to produce certain kinds of hormones. One of them is cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin. And the other one is secretin. And the other one is uh, VIP, we looked at VIP before. And then you have what GIP, which is what gastric inhibitory peptide or polypeptide. So uh, the presence of excess fats, carbohydrates, and acids or irritants in the duodenum stimulates the duodenal mucosa to produce certain hormones or substances that inhibit what? That inhibit uh, gastric secretion. And I've mentioned the hormones cholecystokinin or CCK, secretin, vasoactive intestinal polypeptide, gastric inhibitory polypeptide, okay? And this gastric inhibitory polypeptide was previously called enterogastron, okay? So you may be reading some books, okay? Enterogastron, enterogastron, okay? Entering the duodenum will cause, they will cause what? Distension, okay? They cause distension of the duodenum as well as what? Yeah, so this distension of the duodenum will lead to what we call the enterogastric reflex, okay? So the, the presence of these food substances, okay? Distension of the duodenum, and this leads to gastric inhibition through the three types of reflexes we know. The local enteric reflex, the prevertebral uh, ganglionic reflex, and what the vega vega reflex okay so our first uh, which we've discussed it but then for you to understand it better please you write a short note on ento enterogastric reflex not more than a quarter of a page a quarter of a page not up to half a page please uh, not more than a quarter of a page okay a quarter of a page so you on the enterogastric reflex okay on the enterogastric reflex. So let's look at factors that affect gastric secretion. We look at factors that affect gastric secretion. So first of all, we look at factors that stimulate gastric secretion, and then we look at factors that inhibit gastric secretion. Okay. So the assignment which I've just given out is uh, write a short note on enterogastric reflex. Please, it shouldn't be more than a quarter of a page. Okay. A quarter of a page. And so we look at factors that stimulate gastric secretion. Okay, we look at factors that stimulate gastric secretion. Okay, so the first is food ingestion, especially if associated with increased appetite, right? Okay, and so how will this stimulate gastric secretion? Through conditioned and unconditioned reflexes. Okay, we looked at it. Now we'll talk about food entry in the stomach. Okay, food entry in the stomach. Okay, and this is true what liberation of uh, gastric hormone. Okay, and we, we mentioned earlier that taking alcohol and caffeine can also um, uh, stimulate gastric secretion, of course, and this might uh, account for reasons why people eat with alcoholic wine. But then that's, that's not the only thing that would stimulate the gastric acid secretion, though. So we also have certain emotions, okay? Sometimes anger, anxiety, okay? And these impulses will be discharged from the hypothalamus to stimulate the vagal nucleus in the, in the medulla, okay? So you have an, anger and anxiety. Then hypoglycemia, okay? For example, now I'm, I'm, I'm almost getting hypoglycemic. So this will stimulate the what? The feeding center in the hypothalamus, which in turn stimulates the vegan, the vagus nucleus in the in the medulla oblongata. Okay. And then also if you if you uh, IV injection of certain amino acids, that means if you inject 
um, certain amino acids like alginine, oh sorry, uh, alanine, alanine and glycine. Remember the humoral mechanism where the absorbed amino acids can directly stimulate the gastric secretion. Okay, yeah. So those are some of the factors that can stimulate gastric secretion. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was a beautiful question. I've been expecting that question. Okay, Ruben said, so, so do the phases of gastric secretion occur concurrently or simultaneously to one another? Now, uh, okay, uh, but remember that the first, the gastric phase, the, the cephalic phase only occurs before food reaches the stomach, right? That means when you are thinking of food, okay yeah. or when food enters your mouth that's for unconditioned reflex you already have in gastric acid secretion okay so and when the food enters the stomach when the food enters the stomach then you have the that means you have not a gastric phase okay but then it doesn't mean that the cephalic phase would have ended you understand it could still be occurring while food is still in the stomach while, while, while some food has entered the stomach, isn't it? So the gastric phase, but then the gastric phase will only occur when food enters. It could be occurring concurrently with the cephalic phase because it's not as if food enters the stomach once, isn't it? And then, so you stop thinking about food or there's still no food in the pica cavity. But then the contribute, the gastric phase is when food enters the stomach. So as food is entering the stomach and you're eating, okay, it's possible depending on the kind of food as well that it would have already been sent to the to the to the, to the, to the small intestines okay to the small intestines that intestinal phase occur so it is possible for for it to occur concurrently okay especially the cephalic and the gastric phase but then uh, it would remember the gastric phase will only occur when food has entered the stomach okay i don't know if i was able to address your your question okay so we have um, factors that inhibit gastric secretion. Okay, first is what we will have reduction of the pH in the pyloric antrum below two. That means uh, because the pyloric antrum is already leading to the GI, to the duodenum. So when the pH goes below two, it's quite acidic, and so this acidity. Would, would reduce what uh, gas gas secretion as we will see later on. Okay, then we also have duodenal distension. This distension of the duodenum will lead to the production of all those substances we've mentioned: CCK, secretin, okay, as well as the enterogastric reflex. Okay, then we have certain emotions like fear, depression. Okay, can also inhibit gastric as gastric secretion. Okay, as a ribbon, I don't know if I was able to address your question and so let's look at the we've done about gastric secretion we don't know what we what has been secreted so let's look at the gastric juice okay let's look at the gastric juice and so uh, uh, the gastric juice is about 2.5 liters okay the, so the gastric glands secrete about 2.5 liters of gastric juice daily and which is highly acidic okay having a ph of about one to two okay and because it is rich in what hydrochloric acid, okay? And so the gastric juice is rich in hydrochloric acid, okay? Highly rich, highly rich in hydrochloric acid. And, um, and then it has a pH of about one to two, and the, the volume sixty produced a day normally is what? One point, it's about uh, 2.5. Okay, uh, somebody is asking, okay, probably maybe if you're asking the condition and the unconditioned reflexes. Now, what are the unconditioned? Seeing, thinking, okay? So, seeing about seeing food. Sorry, the conditioned reflexes, okay? The conditioned reflexes are the ones of seeing food, thinking about food, hearing food, okay, smelling food, okay? Those are things before the food even gets to your mouth, right? But once the food gets to your mouth, this is the unconditioned reflex, okay? So it's possible that there is food in your mouth and then you are still thinking or smelling food, isn't it? I think it could occur concurrently or simultaneously, okay? If that is, if that is your, your word. 
So besides having being rich in hydrochloric acid and having a volume of about 2.5 average daily and a pH of about 1 to 2, it contains water, inorganic ions like calcium, potassium, sodium, magnesium, halogen ion, and, and anions like phosphates, sulfates, chloride. Okay, and it also has enzymes, pepsinogens, gelatinase, and gastric lipase. Okay, so it has gelatinase and what gastric lipase and pepsinogens. Okay, so the, gelat the, the gelatinase is what liquefies gelatin and the gastric lipase hydrolysis triglycerides to fatty acids and glycerol okay triglycerides to fatty acids and glycerol and so we have renin okay we have renin okay okay let's see let's make sure the spelling is important renin or chymosine okay it's, it's a meal coagulating enzyme that is present in the stomach of young animals, okay, but uh, it, it seems it's absent in man, okay, it seems it's absent in, in man, okay. Then the gastric juice also contains intrinsic factor, okay, which is formed by the by the parietal cells or the osentic cells, and and is essential for the absorption of vitamin B twelve in the terminal ileum, okay. And then the gastric juice also contains mucus, okay? And we have two types of mucus. We have the soluble mucus and the insoluble mucus, okay? The soluble or the thin mucus and the insoluble or the thick mucus. Insoluble or what? Thick. And then we have the soluble or thin mucus. The soluble or the thin mucus. Okay, so the soluble or the thin mucus, and then um, so we have these things. The first one I ask you to do is uh, on the enterogastric reflex. Please, it shouldn't be more than a quarter of a page, and differentiate between differentiate between the soluble. An insoluble mucus produced in the in the stomach in the stomach. Okay, so you you make the difference. They they are quite clear. Okay, so you look at them from uh, the differences include where they are produced from, the kinds of glands that, that are produced from, and um, also their functions. Okay, and. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's okay. So you look at that. Okay, please, you look at that. Okay. And so this is what I'm about talking now. It's something I, I always ask. Mechanisms of protection of the gastric mucosa. Okay, how does the stomach protect itself from the harshness of the hydrochloric acid? Very important. Okay. Very important. How does the stomach protect itself? How does the gastric mucosa protect itself? Okay, let me use the word from the harshness of the acidity of the stomach as well as from the pepsinogens. Okay, or from there. Yeah. Now remember that the the enzymes, the pepsin that is produced, produced in in is in an inactive form. Okay, and and why is pepsin produced in inactive form? Okay, why is pepsin produced in inactive form? So let me get the answer as we continue. So the calcium mucosa is protected from damage by hydrochloric acid. Okay. So why is pepsin produced in an inactive form? Let me get the answer, then I continue talking.
So why is pepsin produced? What is why is uh, the pepsin produced in an inactive form called pepsinogen? Okay, the, Vincent, the first part is is great. Okay, and only needs to be active when food is present. So the question is, why does it only need to be active when food is present? Okay, it's highly proteolytic. Yes. Yeah. So why does it need to be active when the food is present? Only when the food is present. Okay. And uh, yeah, can somebody add to what Vincent has, has, has commenced? Yeah, beautiful. Rafi Raff, says it pre to prevent it from eating up the stomach line. And remember, what is pepsin? Pepsin is a protein that digests what? Okay, Nelly also says to protect the stomach from self-digestion since it is protein. That's beautiful. So those we can join the okay ribbon as well so we can enjoy those answers and starting from what Vincent started with and then saying to prevent auto digestion since the stomach wall is proteins okay okay uh, chumba says the same thing so that's beautiful okay so then the gastric mucosa is protected from the from damage by hydrochloric acid and auto digestion by pepsins using some mechanisms okay so one of the one of the first mechanisms is the nature of the mucosa cell membrane. Okay. These people who are just coming now, um, is it McDonald and Martha? You are coming at one hour twenty one minutes for the next course or for this same one. Okay. So we are talking about uh, the nature of the mucosa cell membrane. Uh, think about it. So the first thing is about the nature, this nature of the mucosa cell membrane resists digestion first by the tight junction in between the cells, okay? The tight junctions, okay? The tight junctions between the cells, okay? The tight junction between the cells prevents the diffusion of hydrochloric acid, okay? So the first is what? The tight junction, okay? So then the second is what the, the gel layer that is formed by the insoluble mucus, okay? The gel layer that is formed by the insoluble mucus. Okay. Remember, I've just given you an assignment to differentiate between the soluble and the insoluble, okay? Then you have the bicarbonate and the mucus. Okay, remember the mucus is secreted and we also have bicarbonate. Huh? And we'll, I'll, show, I'll show you how the, yes, the bicarbonate that is in a, like a component and was secreted uh, surface because our cells forms an unstable layer uh, that has a pH of about seven. Okay, the bicarbonate and the mucus. Remember, mucus is a buffer, it's, it's a buffer. Sorry, it's a buffer. Remember, we're talking about saliva, the mucine. It's a, it's a buffer, isn't it? So, so the mucus has a, buff, uh, a buffering capacity. Okay, so the bicarbonate and the, and the, and the, and the mucus forms an unstirred layer that has a pH of about seven, okay? And so this layer plus the mucus, plus the surface membranes of the mucosa cells and the tight junctions between them constitute what we call the mucosa bicarbonate barrier, okay? So, mucosa bicarbonate barrier. So, you the mucosa bicarbonate bar barrier. Okay. Then, you, we've, we've talked about what the nature of the mucosa cells, the J layer. Then, the third one is prostaglandins. Okay. Prostaglandins, prostaglandins. Okay, when we last was it last year, yes, when I was teaching you about uh, blood, I told you about the synthesis of prostaglandins. You need to understand that. So, um, and we mentioned the prostaglandins are important in many things. Okay, so the, one of the things is that the prostaglandins help in microcirculation of the gastric mucosa, it helps in microcirculation, okay? And so it also 
uh, stimulate mucus secretion and it inhibits acid secretion. Okay, so the prostaglandins uh, promote uh, micro circulation within the gastric mucosa, less and kidney. They also stimulate the mucus secretion and they also inhibit gastric acid secretion. Okay, so when you take aspirin, I'm sure we've heard that one of the side effects long of taking aspirin is will lead to gastric ulcers, right? Or gas, yeah. Okay. So what would that? How would that happen? Okay. Okay, so how does aspirin cause gastric ulcers or predispose to gastric ulcers? Okay, okay. So another thing again is that um, we have the continuous regeneration of the gastric mucosa because they're always, they're sloughed off and they are continuously regenerated. So they also have been protecting and um, Okay, ribbon, so it irreversibly binds to cyclooxygenase enzymes. Okay, that's the first part. Okay, that's the first part. Now, of course, you would need to remember that uh, uh, prostaglandins are formed from um, arachidonic acid, right? And these arachidonic acids are formed from membrane phospholipids by the enzyme phospholipase A2. And so this phospholipase A2 converts uh, phospholipids to arachidonic acid. And the arachidonic acid is converted to prostaglandin H2 uh, by cyclooxygenase enzymes, which we have several variants of like COX1, COX2, COX3. And then from here, you could also have, you could have uh, A synthetase, you could also have prostacyclin synthetase, and then uh, And, I, oh, and then you have um, uh, prostaglandin uh, PGE, uh, PGE2, and then, um, so, so the first thing which you would, the first of all, as uh, Ruben says, this aspirin uh, cyclooxygenase enzyme. This leads to decreased production of prostaglandins, especially PGE, Gastric acid secretion, they would also be that is what we have so far. Okay, and then uh, uh, Mugala, when you that is correct, but then you don't end there because I've discovered one of the things I've found out that, that most students find it hard answering short A equations, and that's one of the things, at least before you you go to year four, you'll be able to answer a couple of them, many of them. So uh, focus more on short AS equations. So you short AS equations test a student's knowledge of um, of understanding the concepts. So make sure you, you build up on that, okay? So you don't hang patients, okay? You look at them. And so far, so good. Um, Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's see how it goes. Okay, I was thinking we'll go a little bit far today. So um, we want to, to enter on the mechanism of hydrochloric acid secretion. So it would mean me showing so many diagrams and reactions. So I'll look on how I'll see a, a way by which that can be done. Okay, so the assignments for today, please, the assignments are not meant to break you. They are just things we have discussed. Okay, there are things we have discussed. If you listen to me, you have found out that. And then all of this, please, no, no, all of this shouldn't be more than three quarters of a page. Okay, three quarters of a page. And don't copy and paste. I will subtract marks. I, I will subtract marks. Okay, for the other class, year two, people are just copying and pasting. They'll be shocked with the marks they are having. So the first assignment is uh, write a short note on enterogastric reflex. It should be more than a quarter of a page. Enterogastric reflex. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Then the the next one is differentiate between soluble and insoluble mucus. Okay. Then write a short note on the mucosa bicarbonate barrier. The mucosa bicarbonate barrier. Okay. And then the last one is how does aspirin cause gastric ulcers? Okay, we've discussed this, but then please, if I were you, first read them to know. Don't come. I have this information with me, it's for you to build up. Okay, and so, so far, so good. Please, I still haven't had uh, an appreciable response from students concerning the the. The survey link I passed by, please make sure you feel it. And uh, I will send it across again, please. I, I, you should be able to do that. I will be able to do that. Okay. So, any questions so far? I hope you're revising for your tests. It's just a matter of when, not if. Okay. The, the test is just a matter of when, not if. Okay. So, please uh, make sure you're doing that. Gonna be fine, okay. Um, if there are no concerns, I remember when is our due date for the assignment, the one I gave previously. Make sure you send your you you you, you hand in before the due date, okay. After anything after that, I will um anything after that I will reduce marks, okay. So for this one, I don't want this things to stay. Today is Wednesday, by anyway, by Saturday. But then I will I would upload it on the Google Classroom and then I'll put in the due date. Okay, so you'll be able to get a notification of the due date. Okay. So it's basically please don't uh, it's because basically what we've discussed, okay? And then I read before you do the assignment. Don't just do the assignments and send it's for your own good. It's just for your own good, okay. Maxi a bonnet. Okay.